In the previous video of this series of our best bathroom renovation ever, we showed you how we had to overcome some certain engineering failures and disasters here before we could begin to even rebuild up the walls of this bathroom and start the renovation. But you can see what happened here. The PVC pipe broke. So we're going to have to see what we can do to get it fixed. This bathroom had broken pipes underneath the slab, beneath the shower, in between the crawl space between our unit and the unit downstairs from us. We had to address that too. So we'll show you how to fix every single thing that could possibly go wrong when you're remodeling a bathroom. So we are gonna show you how we took this old 1983 ugly bathroom with ugly wallpaper and convert this ugly duckling into a beautiful spring swan. We're gonna show you how this ugly old bathroom turns into this beautiful resort style bathroom and it all starts right now. Now that we got the drain engineering disaster fixed, now we set our sights on picking out a new dual vanity here, which you see here in the store of our local cabinet shop here. I like this because it's got the curved doors on the granite tops, and it was only $1,600. So it's a pretty decent deal for what you're getting here. So here it is dry fitted in the master bedroom here, prior to being installed into place here in the vanity section of the master bathroom. Now we've installed the bamboo flooring in the master bedroom suite and you're looking straight down the end of the line there to the shower at the very end in that doorway there. And we've already started to dry fit the vanity into place. The mirrors are looking nice there and we're really digging this vanity light that we got here. Looks very classy. That's a timeless classic there. Now we're starting to install the hardy boards all throughout the shower here. And remember, you always want to use the hardy fasteners. Those are those green screws. They're waterproof. Don't ever use drywall screws, which I see a lot of people do. It's, it's very foolish. Use the fasteners that are made for your backer board. Now, you remember I told you earlier we had to seal up that hole leading up to the attic because the builder stupidly built this whole thing wrong and never sealed the top of it. So here we have sealed it right up here with drywall and foam. And here, you'll like this one. This is the view of the top side of that fix. We're standing up in the attic up above the shower there now, looking straight down on our fix, how we patched it. So you can see how for 30 years, nothing but uh, a whole bunch of junky insulation has been falling down in that space because the builder never capped it off. All right, so here we are putting the last bit of curdy seal around the edge of this niche and this helps just kind of seal it make sure no water gets behind it you can also do silicon but I just happen to have a curdy seal tube available so we're using this all right so now we're going to put the niche here into our prefabricated hole that we've cut previously and you can feel the curdy seal oozing there behind it and then we'll come back in later and put our screws in and now it's all sealed behind here and this down here is, you can see, is at a, a slight angle to make sure that the water drains into the shower. You never want to have the bottom of your niche be flat. You always want it to be slightly angled. Well, here we are in the master bathroom. And we've already completed putting up all of the hardy board and gotten all the seams taped. And here you can see our niche form that we did and here's our nicely engineered drain it's been filled in with cement and here's the other side where the shower goes so we're going to put up the curdy waterproofing membrane next here's the view of our shower floor area here and there's the concrete slab and in the middle you can see our repair that we finished we filled in the box out for the pipe. That's the drain pipe coming up and it's capped off ready to go. And now here we're dry fitting the floor here. We've got the shower pan kit on there that comes with that curb piece that you see there and 
the shower bench is purchased separately there and we've got these all laid out we're dry fitting them just to see how everything's going to fit together here Now you can see in the previous step we had to wet down the hardy backer boards there prior to installing the the rolls here of the curdy waterproofing membrane because we're going to mortar them onto the walls here as you see here and you don't want it to suck all of the moisture out of your mortar and for this step we make the mortar a lot more fluid than we normally do because we want to be able to squeeze out as much as we can after we attach on and embed these rolls of the curdy membrane that you see right here. So we'll put links to all of this down in the description below there so you can tell exactly what it is you need when you go to do this for yourself. So basically you embed it into the concrete here like you see here and then we're using our trowel here we're just kind of forcing out the excess here. We want to embed everything down and then you force out all the way across. I start in the middle work my way across and we force all of the excess mortar out of the ends of it there. It's almost like doing wallpaper. You don't want to see it bumpy. See how it looks bumpy in the areas where we haven't scraped it yet. So you want to make sure you scrape it all out nice and flat so you have a perfectly flat surface here. Just like you would if you were installing wallpaper. Now here you can see we are of working around the niche you can see it right in the middle there right behind the words schluter curdy there so that's our our arch niche there so here we're just removing more and more of the mortar pushing it to the outer edges to get it out from behind there and now we're laying down some mortar here and combing it into place we're trawling it there and this is for the curb so we always do it on the side and the bottom where the curb will rest on the floor here so you can see we've already preformed and set down the shower pan there. And that's a pre-sloped shower pan that we buy as a kit. And I'll put a link to that kit down below for you as well. And you always want to make sure you're buying the right kit because they make different flavors here. This one here, our drain is in the center of the shower. So you want to make sure you buy the right kit that has the drain in the center of the shower there. And if yours is on the right, then you would buy the kit that has it on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Right, so here we're, we're finishing up putting more of the mortar on here for the curb on the other side now. So when we set this thing in, it should fit in on both sides and on the bottom. And you're going to see here, we're going to put some here on the edge of the, of the shower pan here. So everything will be mortared together. It'll be all nice and solid. So each additional layer of mortar that you put somewhere really helps to solidify and harden up the entire installation here so that everything will work together and it will be one big solid rock by the time it all dries. Okay, so we're just adding a little more there to the end there. And you notice that I still comb it up there. I, I give it the trowel lines there because you still want to collapse down. So here, um, we ended up with two pieces on the curb, so one's a smaller piece because the curb that it came with just wasn't long enough to go all the way across. So then here's the other piece here, the bigger piece that we're going to put in. And it's really critical that once you set it, that both of these two pieces are exactly in line with each other. They're not twisted from each other. There's no lippage. So you can see I'm feeling here with my fingers here, so I don't have any lippage between the two because you want it to be as though it's one whole piece. When this thing dries, it, it will look and feel like it's one whole curb because you will need that when you go to tile on your, your tiles up on top there. So we're just mashing it down there into the mortar. And so here's what it looks like with, with it all put in place here. And see, I've got the curdy band that goes up here. So wherever you have two rolls of the curdy membrane that have to come together as a seam, you need to overlap that seam by two and a half inches on either side. And that's what the curdy band does. It goes right over the middle. So the seam is actually in the middle of that roll of curdy band that you see going up the wall there all the way up to the ceiling. So there we have it. There's everything cemented down. 
we have the bench form of cemented down. We've cut around the, the niche there and folded in the flaps. The bench is looking good there. It's ready to be waterproofed. We put waterproofing on everything there. And there's where our drain is going to be housed right there. So overall, this is really starting to take the basic shape now of what our final product is going to look like here in this shower here. So the, the shower pan curb is in place here. And we'll have to fill up those seams there with, with curdy band all the way around the edge of it there. So it's to total waterproofing is what we're going to have here. And there you can see what we did in the niche here when we cut around it. We folded in the flaps here of the curdy membrane and then we just mortared them down into place there. So now any water that gets in, really, it really won't have anywhere to go anyway because that's a plastic form. But this is all just extra insurance here. And so you can see here we're just about ready to start tiling here on the niche. And you can see more curdy band going up the wall there where we had other seams that had to come together. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're about to cement in the curdy drain here. And this comes with a, it's a gray plastic ABS plastic here. And you have to, this will work with PVC cement, which is what we're going to attach it to. So here I'm putting the primer onto the outside edge of that PVC pipe there. That's the shower drain pipe that goes down into the slab and, and into the crawl space between this unit and the unit below there, see? So what we're doing here is we've got the primer on there now, and you really have to work fast here because you really want your primer to be wet still. It's, it's pretty hard, it, it is, it's, it's almost impossible really. So I've got, um, we're putting the cement on the drain here now, and you have to act really fast because you, you pretty much don't have much time at all here to get this done. So I very quickly put some of the PVC cement on the drain. Then we're doing the outside of the shower drain pipe right there. And then you very quickly put it onto place and try to turn it a little bit so we got it. It's not as much as I normally like to turn it, but it, it, we were just, it's a losing battle there trying to deal with the time factor and the cement is drying on you. So at least we got it into place there. It's not going to move. And then as soon as you get it down, you start forming the the mortar around it here. And what we're doing with all of this mortar here on the shower pan is we are going to lay our pre-cut sheet of the Schluter Curdy waterproofing membrane over that to help finish off the waterproofing seal of this entire shower flooring system. So there it is, we have it down and we're using the same technique that we used on the wall where we scrape out, force out all of the excess mortar out of the edge of the curdy membrane there. And we're going to work it in all the way up, see how it's coming in, the excess is coming out there at the edge where it meets the bench. And we, we get it all the way around the edge of the, the drain there because you want to make sure that, that it goes on just like wallpaper where it's completely glued down everywhere, there's no bumps. It should be as about as flat as you can get it, as flat as you can humanly get that curdy membrane there for the shower pan floor here. Because we want this thing to be nice and perfect and, and ready to attach our shower wall tiles and the shower floor tiles as well. So you just keep on working your way across there and force out all of the excess mortar make it nice and smooth and level. Just keep working out all of those bumps, try to get them all out of the
Now, if you noticed right before I put down the bench seat there, I had the little blue shims in that back corner there. That keeps it angled towards the drain, so any water that lands on there will run off. It will not slope backward towards the wall. That prevents leaks later on. Okay, so now here we are getting ready to embed our river rock floor tiles here which we've already cut and pre-shaped and everything. So each of those sheets has already been dry fitted together so we know where each one's going to go and how it's going to go. So I like to use, after experimenting here, we've found that whenever you're using mosaic tiles like these, you don't really want to go more than an eighth of an inch. A 3 16 of an inch trowel is about the absolute most. And because what happens is it starts to ooze up between the rocks and you're going to be ending up end up just cleaning up all sorts of chunks of mortar oozed up everywhere. And it, it'll be a very difficult task for you. So just an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch and, and experiment. You know, just try one sheet, see how it works, see how well it embeds for you. And I'll come back in with a wood block and and mash it down on top of this. I'm just using my hand right now just to set them into place, see how they look, and to see whether we need to do anything, if we need to use more or less mortar on the next row of the tiles there. And don't worry about how they look right now, you know, how you can almost see the lines between the sheets of tiles here, because once we get them in place here, we'll start wiggling the individual tile. So we just use the same strategy as we go down the aisle here. And just carefully mash them in place into the mortar there. And remember, less is more with the mortar here because you just don't want it oozing up in between here. So now you can see how we cut that piece that's sort of in a circle there to fit around the drain. And once we put in the square drain grate here, which is part of the Schluter drain kit, the square piece, we will then um, cut up some small pieces of river rock and have it come right up to the edge of the square drain grate so it will look like it's just uh, perfectly lined up by the time we're done here. So here we're just kind of making sure everything around it is, is in nice and tight. We have to put in a few individual pieces here that fill in all the little gaps so that it looks very seamless. Okay, now just a reminder, down in the video description below, we'll put links to any of the other videos in the series before and after. So as the series develops here over the next few videos here, you'll be able to go back and forth between the different videos. And we'll also put it in the thumbnails at the very end of the video there. You'll be able to click on the thumbnails up ahead there. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. And if you're finding it helpful, hey, go ahead and click that thumbs up down below there for us. And make sure you click on that subscribe button down there as well. And don't forget to hit that little gray bell icon as well. Because if you don't hit that gray bell icon, YouTube will not tell you when we upload a video and you'll miss it. We'll have videos going up there and you'll never even know about it. Like it never even happened. So make sure you do that. And thanks for tuning in, folks. And we'll see you on the next one.